Hey everyone, Mr. McIntosh here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to back up your Open Core Legacy Patcher unsupported Mac with Time Machine. Time Machine will allow you then to restore that backup to your Mac if you have to erase and reinstall, or if you have to downgrade from, let's say, for example, Sequoia to a previous OS because you were having problems. And if you look online, there's a lot of people that are reporting problems with trying to restore with Time Machine, but I'm going to walk you step by step through the entire process. You're going to want to stick around for this one. Let's jump in and get started. Our demonstration Mac for this exercise is a 2013 Mac Pro. And what we're going to do is I've got a Mac OS Sequoia installation with Open Core Legacy Patcher installed on it. And we're going to use the example of something's not working right or there's a problem with your hardware configuration on Sequoia and you need to go back to a previous operating system. So what we're going to do is we're going to run a time machine on our external drive. Then we're going to reinstall Mac OS Sonoma, and then we're going to restore this backup that we created here with all of our files. And then we'll be just back to where we were when we left us, so we don't have to reset up everything. So the first thing we're going to need to do is get a drive that you can use that's big enough to restore your backup. And the way to do that is to go to click on Finder or click on Macintosh hard drive and do Command I. This will show you how much capacity your drive is. So this drive in this Mac Pro is 250 gigabytes and you have 207 available. So we are using 36 gigabytes. So that's not that much. That's basically the installation and a couple files that I put on the system and a couple configuration settings to set on here. So we don't need that big of a drive. This one's 128, so this will be just perfect. But you could use a USB flash drive to be able to do it as long as it's big enough, whatever kind of drive you have to be able to do so. So the first thing we need to do, so I'm gonna plug it in. I have this SSD connected to a Thunderbolt 2 dock, but again, you could use a USB, USB enclosure like this to be able to connect your uh, serial ATA drive. So we are going to need to format this disk. Everything since Mac OS Big Sur is formatted with APFS. Everything before Mac OS Big Sur is going to be formatted with Mac OS Extended Journaled. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna initialize or open up Disk Utility, which is in the Applications folder, the Utilities folder, and this is Disk Utility. And what we're going to do is click on View, show all devices. This is a brand new solid state external drive here. So we need to be able to click on the top level to be able to format it and erase the drive properly. So now we can click on erase. And again, if you have any data on here, make sure you back it up because the entire drive will be erased. So what we're going to do is don't worry about the name right now because it'll be renamed. We need to have it APFS and then we need to do GUID partition map. So we'll click on Erase. Now we'll click on Done, and look at that. Time Machine is already detected. Do you want to use this drive as a backup drive? And we're not going to do that, because if you don't get that message for some reason, I want to show you how to be able to get back into it. Okay, to be able to get into the Time Machine settings, all we need to do is go into System Settings, and then just type in Time Machine. And there we go. Time Machine backs up your computer and keeps local snapshots and hourly backups for the past 24 hours, daily backups for the past month, and weekly backups for all previous months. The oldest backups and any local snapshots are deleted as space is needed. We're going to click Add Backup Disk, and we're going to select Untitled. I recommend encrypting this disk unless you know it's always going to be kept in a safe space. Because if it's not encrypted, anybody can access your data or your personal files on this disk if they get it. So I always recommend to encrypt this backup. And what you want to do here is you can put in your password. And you can put a password hint in there. And you can set a disk usage limit if you want. We're going to set that to none right now. We're going to click on done. And we do need to type in a password hint, so we'll do that. And done. Now we're going to prepare that disk. And that's what I was telling you about the, you don't have to worry about the name, because it did rename it as Backups of Tests Mac Pro. So there's our drive, and it's going to start the backup in 49 seconds. So we'll give it a second, and you can actually kick that off automatically, and you can look at the different options that are here. You can exclude different things, and you can change the backup frequency on how often, but we're basically going to take one snapshot of this drive, and we're going to use that. But 
again, you can let the time machine disc sit in there and do continual backups if you would like. So give it, we'll give it a second here. And there it goes. It's already copying data. And it shouldn't take too long because there's not that much stuff that's different from the drive than what we are going to do. So what it's going to do is it's going to basically take an entire snapshot of the drive as is. And then when we go to restore that, we're going to restore that entire snapshot. So we'll let this continue about one more minute and then we'll have our drive ready to go for our restoration. Finishing the drive and it is complete. Today at 11.19 p.m. and the backup is finished. So if we look at the size of the drive, we can cl click Command I. We have 18 gigabytes on disk. So this is ready to roll. An entire backup of all of our system settings, application, files, everything is all set. So now we are ready to get downgrade. I've already created a create macOS installer of macOS Sonoma to be able to simulate the downgrade process. What we're going to be doing is erasing the entire drive. Now, if you needed to double check all your files are here before we go, and then all you need to do is click on enter time machine, and then it'll go into the time machine and you'll be able to go into the backups to be able to see all of the files and the different dates and the backups of all the different things. So if we go to users, we go to test and go to desktop, we should see all of the files on our desk. So let's double click on that. And there's our screenshots in the files folder that we had there as, a, as an example. And that shows you that it's ready to go. And I suggest that you check, make sure all your pictures are in here, movies, music before you go, because again, we're going to be erasing the drive. And you can restore certain files too. There's so many different options that we could spend a lot of different time uh, going over, but we're just gonna do an entire system restore. So we're gonna click on cancel here and close out of this. Now we're ready. So all we're gonna do is we are going to eject this disc because we don't need this right now. And we'll plug that in later. And then we are going to plug in our macOS Sonoma Open Core Legacy Patcher installer that we just created into the drive. Okay, there it is. And we're ready to reboot and restart. Now we're gonna hold down option key. Give it a second for the screen to come up. Continue holding option. And there's our selection disc. This is the internal drive, that image there our main hard drive inside the Mac Pro. And this is this image here is for our USB drive. We're gonna select the USB drive. And then we're gonna install, we're gonna select install macOS Sonoma, enter. It's gonna boot us to the macOS Sonoma installation so we can start the downgrade process. All right, we're in macOS recovery for macOS Sonoma. Now you see the, the restore option here for Time Machine, but what all that basically does is tell you to install the operating system first and then use the setup assistant to then restore Time Machine. That's been the way that Time Machine has been working since Mac OS Big Sur. Before that with Mac OS Catalina, you would restore and install the operating system at the same time. So what we're gonna do is go into Disk Utility and we're gonna erase the internal drive of the Mac Pro. We're gonna select, and then all we need to do is select on Macintosh hard drive. Now, if you are using a touch bar Mac, like a T1 Mac. Make sure that when we are looking at all devices, we do not delete the top level drive because it will erase the embedded OS that runs the touch bar. So that's why we, when we're doing our erase, we're always showing the volumes and we're only doing Macintosh hard drive, which does not touch the embedded OS. But since we're running a Mac Pro, that doesn't matter. So now all we need to do is click on erase. Now remember, again, we're erasing the drive. I always warn you just in case because if you just skip to this part and you didn't do your backup, make sure you do your backup first before we erase the entire drive on our Mac. So now we have our backup because we already did that in the first part, we're ready to erase the entire drive. And then we're leaving all the settings there and click on erase. Done. Now we can close Disk Utility and install Mac OS Sonoma. Click on continue. And agree. Agree again. And Macintosh hard drive continue. And there she goes. We'll let this install. We'll get to the setup assistant. We'll create an account, get to the desktop, make sure all the patches are installed, and we'll pick up right there. 
Okay, we have macOS Sonoma installed. We're at the setup assistant screen. We're gonna walk through the process. When we get to the migration assistant or restore time machine, we are not going to do that now. This is an important step because that's where a lot of people run into trouble. So we will skip the migration or restore time machine through the setup assistant. We'll get to the desktop and continue from there. Okay, we got our account created and we're loading the desktop now. We'll give it a second for Open Core Legacy Patcher to come up for the first time, letting us know that we're booting off of the USB drive instead of the internal drive. There it is. Open Core Legacy Patcher has detected that you're booting Open Core from the USB. We're going to change that. We're going to click on OK. We're going to build Open Core. And we're going to install it on the internal hard drive. Install the disk. And. Remember, the blue is showing what it is currently booted to, to the USB drive. We're going to select disk zero for our internal drive. Done. Now, we are not going to reboot yet. We're going to click ignore. We're going to go back to the main menu. The next thing we're going to do is we are going to revert the root patches. That's where the problem comes in and causes a bunch of problems with the restoration of Time Machine, whether it's in an install or boot loop or black screen or can't log in. Those are the problems caused by the root patches to be able to restore. Once we have the operating system restored with all your files, then we'll be able to reinstall the post install root patches. So we're going to click on post install root patch. We're going to revert the root patches. Give it a second here. And now we're ready to reboot. But remember, we also selected the EFI to our internal hard drive. So we're going to have to hold down the option key on our keyboard and then select the EFI off of our hard drive of the Mac Pro instead of our USB. So we're going to eject the USB drive now and unplug it. I got it unplugged. We're going to click on reboot and now I'm holding down the option key on the keyboard. That's what we wanted to see. Make sure we select EFI boot, enter, and then Macintosh hard drive. And now what we're going to do is we have EFI now selected on our internal hard drive, but we're going to boot the system up without any root patches. Now it's going to be a little bit slow and clunky, but that's fine because this is how we're going to be able to restore our restore drive now. So we're going to wait until it gets all the way into the system. We're going to log in. This message will come up and saying, you don't have your root patches installed. Do you want to fix that? Because that's why you're running slow and you don't have things working. We are going to cancel that. Cancel. Now we're going to click on Finder and then we're going to go into the Migration Assistant through Applications and then Utilities. Migration Assistant. Double click. And then click on Continue. Type in your password, and it's going to close out all the applications and log us out. Now we want to select from a Mac, Time Machine, Backup, or Startup Disk. Now we're going to plug in our drive that we just created our Time Machine on right now. Okay, we got it plugged in, and you can see it's lit up here. And now we can click on Continue. And there it is, backup of tests Mac Pro. So we're going to click on continue. And there's our password that we selected to encrypt the backup. So we're going to type that in now and hit unlock. It's unlocked and now it can see the time machine and click on continue. If you have multiple backups, you can see those here. We're just going to select on the one because we only needed the one. And we're going to click on continue. Preparing source. Here we go. And now it's going to give us what we can transfer from our time machine backup. Give it a second to do all of this processes before we continue. And now that's done. So 3.3 gigabytes selected of the time machine is going to actually be restored, which is the test account, our main account, all the applications, other files and folders and system and network settings. Click on continue. And then what we have to do is we have to select the information to transfer. Choose which information you like to transfer this Mac. Create a secure password for the administrator account that we want to migrate. The account that we created 
on the previous system was named test. We're going to set that password to exactly the password we were using before. Set password. And then click continue. So I'm just going to replace test2 with test. There we go. And now we need to authorize that new user test with our previous account that we just set up. So authorize and type in your password for the account that you just created. Click on OK. And then continue. And there we go. Backup of Test Mac Pro to this Mac. It's going to start the process of restoring all the settings while we're logged out. Transfer all the applications, your settings, your files, your pictures, and everything. It's going pretty quick. So we'll give it a second here to transfer all those files. And that's it. Migration complete. A restart is required to finalize your migrated settings, and you're ready to go and click restart now. Now we can unplug the drive. It's always a good idea to keep this copy somewhere. It's always good to have a backup copy or multiple backup copies, no matter what you do. In case something goes wrong with this time machine, you can always have a secondary backup. It's always good to have multiple backups in different locations too. Just in case something gets lost or destroyed or whatever, you can always have multiple backups. Okay, as you can see, one restart was required. Now it's restarting for a second time. And it's booting back up. It's finishing up the transfer. Migration to your new Mac is complete. Migration completed. Click on done. And look, there's our original test account. Let's log back in and we're almost done. What we're going to do now is we're going to have to reapply the Open Core Legacy Patcher root patches. And then we'll be right back to where we left off. Now, the only caveat here I wanted to mention was is the farther you have to go back when you downgrade, the more possible incompatibilities you'll have. For example, maybe some applications might have some issues or the Photos app database and stuff like that. So you gotta be careful there. And that's why you wanna try to go as close as the operating system that you're trying to downgrade to. That's why we're going from Sequoia to Mac West Sonoma, which is really close. We'll click on Setup Later. And there we are on our desktop. Check this out. All of our files are back. We even had our Safari pop up just like it was. We've got all of our docs setting up exactly the way it was before. We've even got all of our favorites here. If we click on, there should be one bookmark. If we click on bookmark, we should see one favorite in here. And look at that, supported Mac models. It's all there. Everything is just the way we left it. Time Machine is an absolutely fantastic option for Mac OS. And it works really good with Open Core Legacy Patch as long as you follow these steps. So now that we're all restored, we can put those root patches back on the system. So we'll click on OK. And if you don't see this pop up for some reason, just open up the app and click on Install Post Root Patches at this point. We'll click on OK. And there we go for the patching. All right, click on Reboot and Restart. There we are. Let's log back in and we are fully accelerated. All of our backups are back and look, hey, we can <laughs> we can upgrade back to Sequoia if we wanted to. No, thank you for now. We just got back on Sonoma and there we go. We've got a full backup with Time Machine, downgraded back to a previous OS, came back up with the new with the new previous OS, restored with Time Machine, and we're back and running with Open Core Legacy Patch with full acceleration. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or comments. Check out my Patreon if you want to be able to support the channel, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks.